As many of my viewers know, I live in South Florida, and living in South Florida, we have to put up with hurricanes in order to have this beautiful tropical weather. So what I'm going to be doing today, only because I looked on YouTube and there were so few videos, if any, showing the process, I'm going to show you how to take out an old window on your home, concrete block, and install a brand new impact window. I'm going to show you each one of the steps, so let's get started. The window I'm going to be replacing is an awning window. You do not have to have an awning window. It could be a jealousy window or even a single hung or double hung window. The process is going to be basically the same. The first thing you're going to need to do is take a utility knife, a very sharp one, make a cut right in the corner of the window, all the way around the perimeter, and you're going to do the same on the inside. Now the outside is much less critical when you do the cutting. So what you would do is you would take a utility knife. You want to basically just go right into that corner and cut straight down. And you can see how nice it's opening up right in there. You're going to do that all the way around the window and it's going to make it much easier when the windows collapsed inward, which we're going to be doing to remove it from this opening. You definitely want to do a good job on the inside because you do not want the plaster to be damaged or the drywall when the windows collapsed inward. See the bottom of the frame now is exposed. There's the bottom of the frame right there. Let's go all the way around. Only gonna take a few minutes to do this to each window. I already changed five of these, so. I got the hang of it, nice and clear. Let me do the sides. See right here, the corner is good, and I did it all the way up and around. Over here is the caulking bead that I want you to cut on the inside all the way around. You're not going to hold a knife this way, you're not going to hold it that way. This is 90 degrees, this corner, so you want to come in at 45. Go all the way in, and then you're gonna push down just like that. Make that nice clean cut all the way around, and the sheetrock will not be damaged when you remove the window. And you can see the corner has been cut nice and clean, and I did that all the way to the top and all the way around. The next thing I'm going to do is remove the screen from this window, and I'm going to take the crank for the window out because each one of these window panels needs to be removed. With the window screen removed, the next step, I'm going to open this up all the way. And you can see the jealousy windows have a screw right over here. It goes to this rod that goes to the window. There's also going to be a screw on the top corner, Phillips. So I need to remove this screw, that screw on all three panels and do the same on the opposite side. Sometimes what happens when you go to take these screws out as in this case, all right, there's a threaded insert that's inside the piece of aluminum and it's spinning. So in that case, you're going to have to get either a hacksaw blade or an oscillating tool and you're going to cut this rod and do the same for every other one that is not coming undone when you go to take the screw out. You see that one's cut. Let me do the same for the other five. When you hit it up, you're going to release it and it should come out. Right, yeah, you just got to. There we go. You can see there's a little post right here. That post goes into an opening right over here. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, as you can see, the three awning window panels are now removed from the aluminum frame. The next thing I'm going to do is remove the screws from the crank, and there's also a steel bar along the bottom. I gotta remove that as well. Once that's done, we'll go on to the next step. This is usually stuck. This one's okay. Good. Uh, 
at least stand in front of the camera, unfortunately. That one came loose. Okay, so that's looking good. I gotta do the same on the opposite side. As you can see in this image, there are two more screws that need to be removed that support that pipe. And you gotta do the left side and the right. Okay, those two screws are out. Let me get the screwdriver now and go underneath this lip and try and pop this whole thing out. Okay, you see this? Can't leave that in the window when you're going to be cutting the bottom rail. Next, you're going to remove all the screws that are in the frame. Over here, there's one screw. This goes directly into a pressure treated one by two. You're going to take, there's three of these on each side. So I'll do one here, one in the middle and one at the top. And then I have to do the same thing on the opposite side. There's two screws in the bottom and they're generally pretty corroded. Let me see if I can get it undone. No, I have to pry it out. So I'll probably just go like this, let's see. There's just a lead anchor in there. Yep. One more on that side. Just pry it up. We're now almost ready to remove the entire frame from the concrete block opening. Let me show you what we have to do next. The next step is to cut this aluminum bottom rail using a 24 or 32 TPI blade. And you want to be very careful not to damage the windowsill on the opposite side. Let me start cutting right here. Now before you go all the way through, you're going to want to pry this up a little bit. That's all. Let me just tap that in. I have the chisel under the cut so I can't cut into the sill. Cut this all the way through. Okay. Now you want to be careful. You do not want to lift up too high on each one of these edges. If you lift up too high, what's going to happen, the end is going to be driven downward and you can damage the windowsill. So you want to move it just enough to be able to pull the window out of the frame here. So I'm just going to get in here. And you can see, very nice. That came away. Let me do the same on that side. Wiggle it. And this side really came off easy. Tap on the right side again. And the whole thing should come right out of the opening now. Easy as that. Pressure treated one by twos look pretty good. All right, so what I want to do next is just clean around the perimeter of that opening. And then I'm going to go on the inside, vacuum, and I need to put up a plastic covering on the inside. What I decided to do, and what I've done for all the other windows, was go to the dollar store, buy an inexpensive shower curtain liner, and just tape it on the inside of the wall. So when I do all my cutting with the concrete, none of the dust is going to find its way into the house. So let me clean this up, put the plastic in place, and then I'll come right back. Okay, the plastic is over the opening. I use painter's tape to prevent damage to the paint inside the room. The next thing we need to do is prepare the opening. There was a little bit of damage to the windowsill here, not caused by me. More than likely when they put the aluminum awning window in, they forced it or tapped it in with a hammer and the very corner of the tile was damaged. Luckily, 90% of it's going to be hidden by the new impact window. Now the new window that I'm going to be installing is a vinyl double glazed impact window and the width of the frame is two and a half inches. So right over here we have a pressure treated one by two that's one and a half inches wide so what I need to do only because the wood is not flush with the concrete in this case is I need to take my diamond saw blade and I need to make a cut one inch further out 
So I could pop this piece of wood out on both sides and I'm gonna to have to add a brand new one by three. By doing that, the frame will be fully supported. Now, in the event that you have the pressure treated one by, or in this case, one by two, which is in perfect condition like this one, and it happens to be flush with the stucco or concrete, which I had happen on this house twice, it'll be flush with the wood and the concrete. In that case, you could just put a few more tap cons into the one by, and then when you put your shims for the window, you can go on top of the wood and the concrete. So when you drive the screws from the frame of the window, some of them are on the outside, it will go through the shims into the concrete, and the inner ones will go directly through the wood strip into the concrete block. In this case, this is angled, so I'm going to have to swap these out. The top of the window is also going to have to be cleaned up, and I'm going to have to remove that quarter inch shim and install a three quarter inch board or a one by board, pressure treated, into the top as well. Let me show you the window I'm going to be using and then we'll come back to this. Right here's a look at the window I'll be installing. It's a 70 series American Craftsman by Ply Gem and it's a vinyl impact window. The size of this window is 35 and 7 eighths in width. That's excluding the flange which you'll see later and 49 and a half from top to bottom. So to make life easier, what you want to do is you want to take a piece of wood, preferably a 2x2, two two, and you want to measure the length of the window and add a sixteenth of an inch. You want to do the same thing with the width of the window. You want to make two boards because it's going to help you when you go to install the shims in the opening. I have both pieces of wood ready. You'll see them in a little while. The first thing I'm going to do is cut a piece of wood that's going to be the same length as this 1x2 right here that goes from top to bottom. So I'm going to make this four foot, two of them, and then I'm going to place the one by three pressure treated, which you see right here, right up against where the old window went, right there, and I'm going to mark where it ends with a marker. Once that's done, I'm going to take my diamond blade on my angle grinder and make a nice clean cut, three quarters of an inch deep, all the way up the side. After making sure this edge is nice and straight and clean, you're going to take the pressure treated 1x3, make sure it's tight against the drywall or sheetrock or plaster, take the pencil and then you're going to mark all the way from top to bottom. Once this mark has been made on both sides of the window, you're going to take an angle grinder with a four and a half inch diamond blade. It goes this way direction. If you go like that, the great majority of the dust is going to be going downward. Now you can hold a vacuum cleaner under it to suck up a lot of the dust or position a fan nearby to blow it away. But you definitely want to have a mask on for this and cover your head because it gets extremely messy. You could do it in one shot from top to bottom. It doesn't take that long. Let me show you. That's how you got to do it. It makes an extreme mess. Let the dust clear and we're going to get closer and I'll show you what you have to do next. Once that's done on both sides of the window, you're going to take a one inch cold chisel and you're going to hit until this whole strip pops out. The easiest way to remove this strip is using a screwdriver. You're going to place the blade right next to where the cut masonry nail is. You're going to hammer it in. And you can see how easy that split, and it also popped this piece out. So you're going to continue doing the same thing, going to the next nail, hitting it, bending it, prying the wood until it pops out, and then we can work on cleaning this area up more 
where we cut it. Okay, you can see how nice and clean the flat ends of the block. Over here is an end of a block that was not flat that they faced here. So I'm going to have to clean this up with the diamond blade. This area here is flat with this surface. Okay, let me finish both sides just like this. And I'll show you how to attach the pressure treated 1x3s. As you can see, I cleaned up this area right here. It's nice and flat with the surface of the block here and the surface of the block there. Very easy to check. Just get a straight edge and perfect space. It's flush. And that's how you correct that. You just keep grinding and just keep checking. And here you can see the pressure treated 1x3 fits perfect. Tap con it in with four two and a quarter inch flathead tap cons. Once that's done, I'll repeat the process to the opposite side and then we'll work on the top. Solid, baby. Right here, you can see how clean that came out, all the way up to the top. If you're very careful, you should not damage the stucco in any way. Now, the space that I have between both of the pressure-treated strips is going to be roughly 36 and 3 eighths, so it's almost a half of an inch wider than the window itself. So that's going to be fine. It'll give me a quarter of an inch shim on one side and a quarter on the other. In the event that you have a bigger space than that, what I suggest you do is instead of using a three-quarter inch board, which is also known as a one by three, you can use a one inch thick board. And that'll give you less with the shim. All right, now that both sides of the window have the new wooden place tap con very nicely, we have to go up to the top and fix that mess. I already pulled off that quarter inch shim that was in there before. We're going to need to clean that area out using the diamond blade saw, chip it flat, and then add a one by in there. Probably get away with a one by two because the screws for the window are on the inner edge when it comes to the top part. So let me get that all clean and install a one by two. Okay guys, it is now fully prepped, both sides, all the way up to the top. You can see that's been tap conned into the concrete block. Now I'm going to show you how to position the shims. Now since this window opening is about 7 sixteenths of an inch wider than the window, we're going to be shimming it on both sides. I want to get the window more or less centered in the opening between the plaster here and the plaster on the opposite side. So I'm going to tack in position right here. You can see there's a line, another line. I did this all the way up on both sides. That's where the anchors or tap cons are going to be inserted through the window frame into the concrete block. There's going to be 15 of them, six on each side of the window and three on top. So I'm going to position it right here. Put another shim behind it just to get it to the right angle because it is angling inward right now. Then I'm going to tack it with a tiny brad. And then I'm going to move up, not to this one, but the one above. And I'm going to take my level. And I'm going to go on top of the shim here to the one over here. And I'm going to make this plumb and then insert the other shim at this location. If you have a three foot level, it's much easier. I only have a two foot, a four foot, and a six. If you have a straight edge, you can put on the outside of the level. You can make it a three foot that way but I don't trust too many things for being straight. So I'm just gonna stick with the two footer because I've been using it for all the other windows with no problem. Once that shim over here is in position, you can move the level up to that spot and go all the way to the top and do the top shim. Once those three are done, you put the level back in position, nice and flat. 
Then you're going to insert the other shim in the center here and in the center above. So let me get this started, come back, show you what it looks like, and then I'm going to go on to the opposite side. And you can see right here, perfectly plumb. Do the top one, and then you're going to insert the one in the middle to get a little bit of tension there, and then you would nail it in position also. And here we are, all six shims in position, perfectly plumb on one side of the window. And if you're wondering how the shims were attached, I used a one inch wire nail. Now you're going to need the two pieces of wood that I told you about earlier that are cut for a sixteenth of an inch larger than the window, top to bottom, and a sixteenth of an inch wider than the window from left to right. By having those two pieces of wood in hand, it's going to make it very easy to install the shims at the top of the window as well as on the opposite side. Right here is the piece of wood, a sixteenth of an inch wider than the window. You're going to take it off of each one of these shims to the opposite side where the other shims are marked. Take the wood, put it in position, push it in, and then you're going to insert the shim until this wood is snug. You want just a little bit of drag when you take the wood in and out between the two shims. You're going to do this one, that one, all the way up to the top. When that's done, both sides should be plumb and the window should have no problem fitting in. Then I'll show you how to do the top. And right here is what it looks like when it's done properly. The wood is only held in there with light to moderate drag. Okay guys, it's almost ready for the new window. All the shims are in position on the left, on the right, as well as the top. I took the larger board right here and went from the bottom. That's perfect there. Good, light drag, and the same thing. Before I install the window, there's one more thing I have to check, and that's how much space is available for the half-inch flange around that vinyl window. It's very easy to trim. You can use a plywood blade on your circular saw, which cuts plastics very nicely. And what you're going to do is you're going to go to the shim. You're going to take a straight edge, like you see right here, hold it on the shim, as well as the windowsill, and you want to measure from the inside edge to the wall or from the top here down to here. You want to make sure you have a half of an inch or more. If you do, you do not have to trim the flange on the window. If you don't, if you only have three-eighths of an inch, then you're going to have to rip off one-eighth of an inch on the flange. So you have to check all the way around and adjust the flange as necessary. For me, I'm going to have to take off some at the top flange, probably around 3 sixteenths of an inch. So let me show you how it's done. To make it easier carrying the window around, as well as installing it, I remove the bottom panel. All you have to do is unlock it, lift it up, release the two locks, one on each side, tilt the window in, and then you can remove it from the frame. It makes it so much easier to install the window. So we're going to be trimming down that edge right there, and I just double checked, one eighth of an inch should be more than enough. So I'm going to be using the circular saw you see on the left with that ripping fence. So let me get it in position. Okay, we're ready to go. There's tape on the bottom of the saw to prevent scratching up the surface of the window. as easy as that. Just clean this with sandpaper and we're going to give it a try installing it. Okay with the flange trimmed we're going to try installing the window now. It should go right in. I checked everything and everything looks good. As you can see that tile sill that's 65 years old is right on the money. Should go in. Close. 
side for everyone. The window fits perfectly into the opening and if you look at the level, you can see the bubble is right in the center. Perfect. To get started, I'm going to put the Tapcon in right over here first. Then I'm going to take the level, make sure it's plumb on this side, put another Tapcon at the top left. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing on the right side. Once that's done, I can do all the other tap cons on the left side, the right side, as well as the top. So I'm going to be using a 2 and 3 quarter inch tap con. It's 3 16 inch diameter. More than enough penetration into the concrete. You want to have at least 1 and a quarter inches into the concrete. So using this, I'm going to be having approximately 1.6, 1.75 inches into the concrete. Okay, if you do that, it rubs right off, luckily. Because the shims are in the correct position, you should have very little movement on the frame when you tighten the Tapcon. I like to install these by hand. I don't want to overdrive them, plus I want to feel how the frame reacts when I tighten down. You can hear it going into the concrete. I'll feel right here when it starts to crank down, which is right now. And that is solid. If you're using this particular brand of window, you're going to put it in that hole. Very nice. Okay, five tap cons have been installed on each side. One, two, three. One, two. Now I have to go inside, I'm going to be putting the window back in after the plastic comes off, and then I have five more tap cons to do. Once that's done, all I have to do is seal the inside and outside of the window. Putting the window back in is easy. Drop one side in, lower the other side in, lift up. Over here's a lock. Both sides do the same thing. And you're good to go. To finish off the job, we need to seal the outside perimeter of the window as well as the inside. Now for the outside, I'm going to be using a polyurethane sealant. It's extremely durable, stands up to the elements. And on the inside, I'm going to be using an acrylic latex caulking. If there are any large gaps around the window, you're going to take some backer rod, gently tuck it in, and then you can apply the sealant on top. Before applying the white polyurethane sealant, you're going to take some WD-40, spray it on a paper towel, apply a thin film to your finger that you're going to be using to smooth out the bead. Have some paper towels on hand, it can get extremely messy. One thing to note when applying this sealant right here, you do not want to wipe over it more than once. And here it is completed with the polyurethane sealant applied all around the perimeter of that window. It looks absolutely beautiful. Let's go inside, I'll show you what that looks like. And right here's a look at the inside. You can see the window is perfectly centered on that opening. The acrylic latex caulking that was applied all the way around that window. If you smooth it nicely, you should end up with excellent results. And that is it guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate, thumbs up, and share. Thanks for watching.